This little green and blue planet is where we live right now. It is named Earth. Our planet is 30% land and 70% water. Speaking of water in the Earth, there are a lot of fascinating and mysterious things in the sea. So today, we are gonna talk about the sea. Hello, this is Riza. The sea is a large body of salt water that is surrounded in whole or in a part by land. More broadly, the sea is the interconnected system of Earth's salty oceanic waters. The sea moderates Earth's climate and has important roles in the water cycle, carbon cycle, and nitrogen cycle. The sea is conventionally divided into five large oceanic sections, namely Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Ocean. These nutrient-rich waters teem with life, which provide humans with substantial supplies of food, mainly fish, but also shellfish, mammals, and seaweed, which are both harvested in the wild and farmed. The most diverse areas are surrounded with great tropical coral reefs. The sea is an essential aspect of human trade, travel, mineral extraction, and power generation. Atmospheric carbon dioxide is being absorbed in increasing amounts, lowering its pH in a process known as ocean acidification. The shared nature of the sea has made overfishing an increasing problem. Let's talk about seawater. Seawater is salty and although its degree of saltiness can vary, about 90% of the water in the ocean has 34 to 35 grams of dissolved solids per liter, producing a salinity between 3.4 and 3.5 percent. The solutes in ocean water come both from inflowing river water and from the ocean floor. The relative composition of the solutes is stable throughout the world's oceans. Sodium and chloride make up about 85 percent. Other solutes include metal ions such as magnesium and calcium and negative ions such as asulfate, carbonate, and bromides. Hi, I'm Trisha and I will be talking about tides. Tides are regular rise and fall in the water level experienced by the seas and oceans in response to the gravitational influence on the moon and the sun and the effects of the Earth's rotation. At any given place, the water rises over the course of the tidal cycle to a maximum height known as high tide, before eaving away again to the minimum low tide level. As the water resides, it uncovers more and more of the foreshore or intertidal zone. The difference in the height between the high tide and low tide is known as the tidal range or tidal amplitude. Tidal bores can occur on the mouth of the rivers, where the force of the incoming tides pushes waves of seawater upstream against the current. On the opposite side of the earth, the lunar force is at the weakest and this causes another bulge to form. These bulges rotate around the earth as the moon does. The sun's effects is less powerful but with the sun, moon, and earth are all aligned at the full and new moons. The combined effect result in the high is spring tides. In contrast, when the sun is at 90 degrees from the moon as viewed from earth, the combined gravitational effect on tide is correspondingly reduced, causing the lower nip tides. Although, tides are regular and predictable. The height of high tides can be lowered by the offshore winds and rise by the onshore winds. 
The high pressure at the center of an anticyclone pushes down the water and is associated with abnormally low tides, while low pressure areas may cause extremely high tides. A storm surge can occur with the high wind spiral, water up against the coast in the shallow area and this. Coupled with a low pressure system can raise the surface of the sea at the high tide dramatically. Habitats Marine habitats can be divided horizontally into coastal and open ocean habitats. Coastal habitats extend from the shoreline to the edge of the continental shelf. Most marine life is found in coastal habitats, even though the shelf area occupies only 7% of the total ocean area. Open ocean habitats are found in the deep ocean beyond the edge of the continental shelf. Alternatively, marine habitats can be divided vertically into pelagic, demersal, and benthic habitats. Coral reefs, the so-called living forests of the sea, occupy less than 0.1% of the world's ocean surface. Yet, their ecosystem include 25% of all marine species. Many substances enter the sea as a result of human activities. Combustion products are transported in the air and deposited through the precipitation. Agricultural, industrial, and unsewage outflows contribute heavy metals, pesticides, PCBs, disinfectants, cleaning products, and other synthetic chemicals. The result of this contamination is largely unknown because of the large number of substances involved and lack of information on their biological effect. The heavy metals of greatest concern are copper, lead, mercury, cadmium, and zinc, which accumulated by marine interbreeds. They then pass up, up the food chain. Nitrogen is often the limiting, limiting factor in marine system in addition of nitrogen spark, algal blooms, and red tides, which they may lower the oxygen level of the water to the point where it kills marine animals. The dumping of waste, including oil, noxious liquids, sewage, and garbage at the scene is covered by international law. Much floating plastic trash does not biograde. Instead, it's degrading over time and eventually breaking down to the molecular level. Rigid plastic may float for years. For aging seabirds such as albatross and petrel may mistake debris for food and accumulate indigestible plastic in their digestive systems. Most oil pollution in the sea comes from cities and industry. Oil is dangerous for marine animals. It can clog the feathers of seabirds, reducing their insulating effect, and birds buoyancy and be ingested when they breathe themselves in an attempt to remove the contaminant. In short term, oil spill result in wildlife population being decreased and unbalanced, leisure activities being affected, and the life livelihoods of people depend dependent on the sea being devastated. The marine environment has self cleansing properties and natural occurring bacteria will act over time to remove oil from the sea.